Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer at St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine. Today is the 11th um, week of um, ordinary time, 11th week after Pentecost. And uh, today we are celebrating um, the life of a important saint. And that man is named um, Thomas Akempis. He was born, uh, his last name actually was Thomas um, Hammerken, which means little hammer. But he was born in the town of Kempen within the Duchy of Cleves in Germany, somewhere around 1380. And because he was born in uh, Kempen, that's where his name comes, Thomas Akempis, as in Thomas from the town of Kempen. He was educated in a uh, religious order called the Brethren of the Common Life, and eventually he joined it himself. He was ordained a priest and then became a sub-prior in his um, monastery, and he died in 1471. He actually died on July 25th, but tomorrow is, um, there's a conflict tomorrow because it's the same day of uh, feast day rather of James the apostle, apostle the son of Zebedee and so we celebrate it on the 24th. His order stressed um, the inner life of the individual rather than on uh, any particular type of works or um, observances. Thomas Akempis is known primarily and really only as being the author of the of a manual of spiritual advice called the imitation of christ if you've never read it it's one of those things that you really ought to try we have several copies in our library and you'd be welcome to borrow them whenever um, possible and if you don't happen to be with saint john's um, almost every church library will have a copy it's it's that important And, uh, and the, by the way, the manual or the imitation of Christ uh, says that the reader should follow the example of Jesus Christ and be con um, conformed in all things to his will, which is the definition of our of work on our inner life. So Thomas Akempis. With that, we'll be beginning on, as usual, on page 78 of the prayer book and moving to page 80. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Turning to page 82, let us say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The Psalm. This morning we will read Psalms 41 and 52, starting on page 641, whole verse responsively. Happy are they who consider the poor and needy. The Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves them and keeps them alive so that they may be happy in the land. He does not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies are saying wicked things about me, 
when will he die and his name perish? Even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their heart collects false rumors. They go outside and spread them. All my enemies whisper together about me and devise evil against me. A deadly thing, they say, has fastened on him. He has taken to his bed and will never get up again. Even my best friend, whom I trusted, who broke bread with me, has lifted up his heel and turned against me. But you, O oh Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up, and I shall repay them. By this I know you are pleased with me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you hold me fast and shall set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from age to age. Amen. Amen. Now turning to page 657, we will read together, whole verse responsibly, Psalm 52. You tyrant, why do you boast of wickedness against the godly all day long? You plot ruin. Your tongue is like a sharpened razor. O oh, worker of deception. You love evil more than good, in lying more than speaking the truth. You love all words that hurt. O oh, you deceitful tongue. O oh, that God would demolish you utterly, topple you and snatch you from your dwelling and root you out of the land of the living. The righteous shall see and tremble and they shall laugh at him saying, this is the one who did not take God for a refuge, but trusted in great wealth and relied upon wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks for what you have done and declare the goodness of your name in the presence of the godly. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson. A lesson from the first book of Samuel. When Saul returned from following the Philistines, he was told, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to look for David and his men in the direction of the rocks of the wild goats. He came to the sheepfolds beside the road where there was a cave, and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men were sitting in the innermost parts of the cave. The men of David said to him, Here is the day of which the Lord said to you, I will give your enemy into your hand, and you shall do to him as it seems good to you. Then David went and stealthily cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. Afterward, David was stricken to the heart, because he had cut off a corner of Saul's cloak. He said to his men, The Lord for forbid that I should do this thing to my Lord, the Lord's anointed, to raise my hand against him, for he, he is the Lord's anointed. <clears throat> so David scolded his men severely, and did not permit them to attack Saul. Then Saul got up and left the cave, and went on his way. Afterwards, David also rose up and went out of the cave, and called after Saul, My lord the king! When Saul looked behind him, David bowed down with his face to the ground and did obeisance. <clears throat> David said to Saul, Why do you listen to the words of those who say, David seeks to do you harm? This very day your eyes have seen how the Lord gave you into my hand in a cave, and, urged, and some urged me to kill you, but I spared you. I said, I will not raise my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. See, my father, see the corner of your cloak in my hand, for by the fact that I cut off the corner of your cloak and did not kill you, you may know for certain that there is no wrong or treason in my hands. I have not sinned against you, though you are hunting me to take my life. May the Lord judge between me and you. May the Lord avenge me on you, but my hand shall not, shall not be against you. As the ancient proverb says, out of the wicked comes forth wickedness, but my hand shall not be against you. Against whom has the king of Israel come out? Whom do you pursue? A dead dog? A single flea? 
May the Lord therefore be judge and give sentence between me and you. May he see to it and plead my cause and vindicate me against you. When David had finished speaking these words, Saul to Saul, Saul said, Is this your voice, my son David? Saul lifted up his voice and wept. He said to David, You are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, whereas I have repaid you evil. Today you have explained how you have dealt with me, and that you did not kill me when the Lord put me into your hands. For who has ever found an enemy and sent the enemy safely away? So may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done for me this day. Now I know that you shall surely be king, and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Swear to me, therefore, by the Lord, that you will not cut off my descendants after me, and that you will not wipe out my name from my father's house. So, Saul, so David swore to Saul. Then Saul went home, but David and his men went up to the stronghold. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The first canticle. Turning to page 86, let us say together Canticle 9, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is good God who saves me. I will trust in him and not to be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forevermore. Amen. The second lesson. A lesson from the Acts of the Apostles. The next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. And blaspheming, they con contradicted what was spoken by Paul. Then both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken first to you, since you reject it and judge yourselves to be unworthy of eternal life. We are now turning to the Gentiles. For so the Lord commanded us, I have set you to be a light for the Gentiles, so that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and prayed the word of the Lord, as many had been destined, as many had been destined for eternal life, became believers. Thus the word of the Lord spread throughout the region, but the Jews incited the devout women of high standing and the leading men of the city, and stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and drove them out of their region. So they shook the dust off their feet in protest against them, and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second canticle. Turning to page 94, let us say together canticle 19. The Song of the Redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The third lesson. A lesson from the Gospel according to Mark. Again, Jesus began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat there, while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, 
and it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil, and when the sun rose it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, Let any one with ears to hear listen. When he was alone, those who were around him, along with the twelve, asked, about, asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything comes in parables, in order that they may indeed look, but not perceive, and may indeed listen, but not understand, so that they may not turn again, so they may not turn again and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path, for the word is sown. When they hear, <clears throat> Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy, but they have no root they, and endure only for a little while. Then when trouble or persecution arises, on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are those sown among the thorns. These are the ones who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. And these are the ones so sown on good soil. They hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us affirm our faith together using the words of the Apostle's <coughs> Creed, found on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation clothe your ministers with righteousness let your people sing with joy keep peace O lord in all the world for only in you can we live in safety lord keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth that your way be known upon earth your saving health among all nations let not the needy O lord be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away create in us clean hearts O god and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Holy Father, you have nourished and strengthened your church by the writings of your servant, Thomas Akempis. Grant that we may learn from him to know what is necessary to be known, to love what is to be loved, to praise what highly pleases you, and always to seek to know and to follow your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires. Incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as we gather ourselves to offer our prayers before God, I invite you to add your own. We pray this day for the church, for our Anglican communion and Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for the Diocese of Southwestern Virginia within the Episcopal Church, for our entire Episcopal Church and Michael, our presiding bishop, for our Diocese of Maine and Thomas, our bishop, for the Congregation of Christ Church in Dark Harbor on Islesboro, and for the Committee on Ministry and for our own parish of St. John's, for our priest James, and for all our people. We pray for the sick, injured, or distressed. We pray for Lori, Amy, Troy, and Evie. We offer continued prayers for Terry, Angela, Tom, Barbara, Olivia, Sarah, Ross, Jenny, Marlin, James, and Pion. We pray for our homebound members, including Robert, Krista, Lily, Erlene, Nyling. We pray for the world, for peace and goodwill among nations and for peoples and places of violence or oppression, and for the many places in our world where there is danger and desperation. We pray for refugees, immigrants, and those who are displaced, most especially for children, for all who suffer for conscience's sake, for our enemies and for those who wish us harm for all suffering effects of climate change and of natural disasters, that the peoples of all nations will find ways to cooperate with God's earth in mitigating the climate crisis, that countries beset by any calamity, whether natural or man-made, may not be forced to compete for the attention of more fortunate nations, and that all people come to understand that the best solution for conflict, whether far or near, is to first love our neighbors as ourselves. We offer this prayer for Ukraine. Gracious God, we pray for the people of Ukraine suffering from war. May they be held in your loving care and protection and given the strength to endure their suffering and hardship. Transform the hearts and minds of those who perpetuate the violence and oppression. Grant wisdom to world leaders in advancing efforts toward peace. We ask all this in the name of your son, Jesus now and forever, our Savior. Amen. We pray for our own nation, for all who live with the daily threats and effects of gun violence, for the healing of divisions and the celebration of diversity, for the recognition that no single viewpoint on any issue, no matter how important, is without human error. For all who suffer from injustice, for eyes to see injustice, and for the will to work for fairness for all of God's people, and for all who struggle to change our world and its systems of oppression and exploitation. We pray for the leaders of our country, state, and community, for Joseph, our president, members of Congress especially, Susan, Angus, Shelley, and Jared of Maine, for Janet, our governor, and Rick, our mayor, and for those responsible for administering justice in the courts of this land that they all may serve our nation and the world with wisdom, civility, and compassion. We pray for our military personnel, especially those of this parish. We pray for Sarah, Dylan, Joshua, and Timothy. And we offer prayers of thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays during this week, including Virginia, Russ, and Jeff. And we pray for the departed, for Nancy Carroll, 
Rosemary Murphy Taylor, for Gail uh, Ruzin, for victims of the war in Ukraine and fighting in Sudan, and for the many victims of gun violence in this country, and for all who mourn for them. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now, turning to page 101, let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Turning the page, let us say together a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. This brings us to the end of our service this morning. We are always happy and grateful that you've been able to be with us for this time and hope that you'll be able to be with us again soon. In the meantime, may we all know the presence of God in our lives this day and find ways of reflecting that presence out into a needy and hurting world. Again, thank you for being with us. May God bless us all. See you soon. <laughs>